I find that there is a collection of plugins that keep reoccurring all the time. And I thought I'll take you through what those plugins are and you can see whether any of those might be useful to you. So I've got seven of those plugins. And the first plugin is the completion progress bar. And it's an amazing little plugin, it's very clever. Uh, what it does, it shows you here, and I've, I've got some links there for those plugins. I'll provide them at the bottom of the video too. So you can go and download those plugins and try them out on your Moodle server. But the completion progress shows you all of the completion activities that happen in Moodle uh, and all the different completion types. So what it does, it allows, uh, it's a block, and you can add that to a student's screen or to their page for their course, and they can look to see where it is they are with each of their assignments, what they've completed and what's left to do. And it shows a nice green um, icon to show that it's been completed and the blue that it hasn't been completed yet. And that works really nicely across uh, all, of the, um, all of the activity types that have completions related to them. So it's a great little, great little plugin. So have a look at that. That's the completion pro progress. We also have a plugin called Grade Me, and Grade Me, I tend to put that block on the home page for teachers, and very, very useful. What it basically does is shows the teacher what they still need to grade. So rather than going into each course and trying to find each of the assignments and checking who's up to, um, you know, what people have done or submitted and where they're up to, you put Grade Me or the Grade Me plugin uh, at the top level of their course or, or even on their dashboard. And on the dashboard, they can just go to the dashboard, have a look and go, oh, great, I need to grade these particular assignments for their students. And it only shows them what they still need to grade, assuming that they are a teacher, uh, editing or non-editing teacher for a course. H5P, if you looked at interactive activities, H5P is very clever. It allows you to add different types of interactive content to your pages. And in Moodle 3.9, H5P is now even more part of the actual platform itself. So it's definitely worth having a look at that. If there are things that you look at with H5P or with interactive content and think, I'd love to do something that just isn't there, it's totally different, let me know because I'd love to help you out with that. I'm very interested in interactive content for education. Generico is another plugin. Now this one's a bit of a technical plugin, but it allows you to create a template that can be embedded in pages using short codes into content. So an example of that, uh, maybe that you want to embed a YouTube video uh, in a page, but and you can use the normal YouTube um, or video embed that's part of Moodle. But if you use a generic code template, you can create your own template that has the HTML code wrapped around the uh, video embed code, and um, and then be able to modify that yourself. So if there's a particular look or particular HTML or classes that you'd like wrapped around your videos you can create a template that can be used over and over and over in all the content. And it's used as part of a filter in Moodle. And it, uh, it lets you add sort of customized content that can be added by a short code. And by a short code, if you have a look here, we've got the short code generico type equals iframe URL equals and the URL. So if you put that into a page content with the URL of the video, then it will use the generico template to go and create all the code that wraps around that. So it's like I say, it's a bit technical, but it has lots of really clever things that you can do, including reading from the database as well. So it's a great, um, great one to use. Now, course templates is incredibly useful. If you, uh, like most people, you create a course and then you go and create the next course and you start from scratch and you have to go and put all the activity types together and put everything together. It's actually much, much easier to create a course template or basically create a course that is used as the default course for anyone who wishes to create a new course on your platform. So you can have everything set up and ready for them to go. They've just got to add their content. Uh, you can have the activity types set up or the settings for activities set up for them. The whole structure of a course all ready to go as a course template. Really that's just as a course, but we'll call it a course template. And then the course template plugin allows them to choose, instead of create a new course, they create a course from a template. And that allows them to use that course template as their course instead. And it saves a whole lot of time and, and makes consistency 
much, much better because you're basing it on a default course that you've created that has all the settings already for the course creators uh, to develop. So it's definitely a, a, a plugin worth looking at because course templates can be great for content developers in creating new courses where you set all the defaults ready for them. So it's, it's a great thing to look at. So try that out, course templates. Uh, the last two that I want to show you are actually themes. And they're two different themes that I've used quite a bit across different Moodle servers. One of them is the Fordson theme. And the Fordson theme is incredibly good. It just has so many things in it that you can do, so many options and things that you can try out. Uh, it has a, some templates that you can use as well. But it is a theme. So if you're going to use it, you will need to make sure that you do all the settings and set everything up correctly in the Fordson theme. So have a look at the Fordson theme. It's, um, it's very practical and uh, it is a free theme. The other one I'd like to show you is a theme called RemUI by a company called Edwiser. So it is a paid theme, but it is actually really, really good as well. It works brilliantly on mobile. So um, it scales down really nicely for tablets and for mobile devices. That works really well. It's uh, because it's a paid theme, it also has some really good extra features uh, like you know, changing all the colors for your theme and everything is, um, is much easier to do. But uh, it is definitely worth having a look at because it's a clever theme. It's a really nice, very business-like theme, if that's what you're going for, uh, for your students, then it is something absolutely worth looking at. Now, as a bonus, I'm actually going to give you or show you one other th uh, plugin. And this is one that I wrote just as a, to teach you how to create a plugin. So if you are interested or you, you know, have some PHP developers that are interested in creating your own plugins for Moodle, uh, I've just got this, um, this plugin that's sort of a demo one that I can show you that I use for a course on, on how to create plugins. So let me show you. So the reason for showing you this plugin is that it's one I use for a course teaching people how to create their own plugins for Moodle. If you have some PHP developers or you have PHP skills and you're interested in creating your own plugin that will do exactly what you need in Moodle, then the, this course may be useful to you or maybe to help you out with that. Just as an example, the Staff Manager is the demo course and the Staff Manager allows you to go to Rates and in the Rates you can set the rate for an assignment or the rate for a quiz per month. So if that changes each month, you may have a different rate uh, or as time goes on, you may change your rates. You can go in and edit these rates per month and decide what rate you'd actually like to have set so that if a teacher grades an assignment or a teacher grades a quiz, then they can be paid the amount that you have set for that month. I should say in the plugin, I teach you how to edit data create data, uh, create a database table if it's needed for a local plugin, and then how to display that data. So for our staff manager, if we choose September for this year, and choose search, it then goes through and finds each of the teachers that have completed or graded something. In this case, the admin user graded two different grades and it shows the total value. And that's just for September. We can have a look at the details about that and it shows here that the admin user graded the course test course one, uh, the assignment one, and also graded quiz one. And you can see the two rates that, they, that were set. So they were paid $15 to grade this quiz and $18, sorry, to grade the assignment and $18 to grade the quiz. And you can see the values that they gave and the feedback that they provided as well with a total of $33 for admin user for September 2020. So that's just an, an example of how this little um, plugin works. But what I do is I teach you how that how all of that is created, how you can create the, the screens to display that, how you can create the plugin and install it, and create all the database uh, interactions that happen behind that, and how to use some of the amazing features of Moodle, which you know, Moodle is designed as a modular platform, which is why it's so great for adding plugins and creating plugins for it. So hopefully those plugins have been useful to you. Uh, go back and try some of them out if you need to. Make sure you run them on your test server first, of course, or your staging server before you actually implement them and see if they are useful to you. And hopefully that's been helpful.